Just we know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. The Dialogue, the community voice of Southern California's Young Professional Network. Relevant discussions about the thoughts, concerns, opportunities, and challenges faced by today's generational leaders. Real talk, real people. This is The Dialogue. The Dialogue. With Starlet Quarles on L.A. Talk Live and streaming live at www.latalklive.com. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs good to you. Good evening, good evening, oh, ladies and gentlemen. God. Welcome once again to the dialogue. Real talk, real people. I am your host, Starlet Quarles. We're on live at latalklive.com and also streaming live in Omaha, Nebraska at 1690 AM. The one, the voice of the voiceless. As always, the dialogue is the voice of our generation. So thank you so much for joining us here every Wednesday from 5 to 6, where we like to discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. Uh, we are continuing our series this month. Let's just talk about it. Today's Black Church. This month we are tackling topics around the spirituality of this generation, primarily our black men. And we want to know from their perspective, where do they stand with today's black church? Uh, we started this series last week with our very controversial conversation, religion versus spirituality. What does this generation really believe? Our guests included the associate minister, Brian Peters, our own Shaquem Williams of The Shock Factor, right here Fridays at 8 o'clock, and Jakeem Stewart, an entrepreneur who we've invited back this week on this show because he just did not have a chance to get his words out to really express himself with all the controversy last week so if you missed last week's show if you had any chance at all uh, to view or uh, check out the replay of religion versus spirituality please check out our uh, website at the dialoguela.com in fact we had so much feedback about last week's show that we're going to do a part two um, next week uh, with uh, a, a panel of black men and we have actually invited back Associate Minister Brian Peters, who was one of my most controversial guests. So we're going to do Religion versus Spirituality Part 2 next week. So make sure you tune in Wednesday at 5 o'clock right here on The Dialogue. So our show tonight is called Why Aren't More Black Men in Church? So we again, we have a full panel of black men, intelligent black men today as we did last week. Uh, we, again, we've invited back Jakeem Stewart, an L.A.-based entrepreneur and auto sales specialist talk show host Herman Jones of Keeping It Relevant, and senior pastor K.W. Tulis of the Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church, all here to discuss why aren't more black men in church. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you on this topic, so make sure you give us a call at the second half of the show at 323-247-7443. Again, that is 323-247-7443. And you can always post your comments or questions on our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash the dialogue LA or tweet me like always at star Quar. Today's show brought to you again by Urban X Marketing and the Wave Newspapers. Check out the Wave Newspapers on your local newsstands here in Los Angeles or on the Wave at wavenewspapers.com. We are going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to jump right into our conversation about why more black men aren't in church. Right here on The Dialogue with me, Starlet Quarles. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back.
I remember the early days of my business when I started with a personal computer, new business cards, and my line of credit was on plastic. Now things have changed and you have a real job creating business. Recently, I turned to my bank for a new loan and found out they couldn't meet my needs. I now realize that after the credit crisis, many financial institutions no longer have bankers with the necessary expertise to understand my business or have the ability to provide flexible credit solutions. You searched for a better solution from someone with financial knowledge of a big bank and common sense understanding of a small business. I found Michael Banner and the Los Angeles LDC who solved my problem and exceeded my expectations. Now, when I have a credit or other financial need, my first call is to the Los Angeles LDC. My trust by providing the best credit solutions and advice at affordable rates and terms. Where do you go when the banks say no? Los Angeles LDC, a community development financial institution. On the web at losangelesldc.com or by phone 800-366-1178. Loans made under a commercial finance lender's license from the California Department of Corporations. Hi, this is Nick Cordelai Corte inviting you to join me Sundays at 10 a.m. right here on LA Talk Live for our all new show, People Are Talking. Join us as we offer you a weekly dose of fresh perspectives with in studio guests, hot topics in the world of politics and pop culture, and the voices of everyday people impacted by the political issues coming to a ballot box near you. So don't forget to tune in to People Are Talking exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB, watch us on Ustream.tv, or even catch us under the Radio Flags app under ILATK. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Welcome back to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. I am your host, Starlet Quarles, and we're on live at LATalkLive.com, and we're going to get right into our conversation, today's conversation, Why Aren't More Black Men in Church? This is the second in a four-part series on our topic this month, Let's Talk About Today's Black Church. Our guests today include Jakeem Stewart. You guys all remember Jakeem from last week, a Los Angeles-based entrepreneur and auto sales specialist. And we've invited him back this week. Welcome back, Jakeem. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> uh, next thing, we have visionary producer, talk show host of Keeping It Relevant, Mr. Herman Jones, a.k.a. Sir Relevant, the Truth Seeker. Welcome, Herman. How you doing, sir? Beautiful. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And last but certainly not least, Pastor K.W. Tulos, who is the senior pastor at Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church, one of the oldest black churches in Los Angeles, in the Boyle Heights area, actually, which is near East L.A. And he's been pastoring there for five years of 17 years in the ministry. So please welcome Pastor K.W. Tulos to the dialogue. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for joining us here for our series Let's talk about today's black church, but specifically, why aren't more black men in church? And Angie Kim, I'm going to start with you um, because I want to tap into a little bit about our discussion uh, last week. And I want you to go back and, and share with us a little bit about, remind us a little bit about your story and why you stopped attending uh, church. Well, I was raised in Los Angeles in a Christian black family, okay. um, very religious, uh, and I know that's a funny way to describe things because either meaning? you're religious or you're not christian okay. uh, we were presbyterian mm -hmm. um we uh had bible study every morning before we went to school uh went to churches on sunday and just i would say about the time i was five or six years old i just started having questions about the stories that were taught so uh, you did so they didn't sound realistic to you i mean what did you start uh, questioning the jesus you know, walk on water you try to you know just from the noah and the and the I mean, just the whole way, the dynamic that what we had to learn, basically that God did give you free will um, to use your mind or your common sense, and but no one had been able to walk through this process of w living without sin. Mm, mm -hmm. All human beings that ever existed, no one ever did it other than Jesus Christ. Okay. And now once Jesus Christ has uh, gone through this process and died for your sins, now you will have the choice of death or follow Jesus Christ. 
And this was. And that choice, I mean, it kind of, you know, I mean, it, along with other things and just dad, ha hey, how come, what if a person lives on an island and they never have heard about Jesus and they lived, you know, 500 years ago? Are they going to be able to get into heaven, this place with these pearly gates and everything that we visualize as there is actually here on earth? Okay. So, and he said, no, they're, they're, they're going to hell. And so, this is a conversation you had at five years old? Uh, yeah, about five, six. Okay. And I started just all kinds of questions. I mean, I could fill a show with that that type of thought process. Okay, so last week um, you were on the show. You were on the show. We had Brian Peters, who um, is the associate minister at his father's church, and he was very dogmatic in terms of his that, Christian perspective. That, yeah. And you said after the show, you know, he reminded me a lot of my dad. So, so talk well, about that type of attitude. Not necessarily just my dad. My dad okay. is actually not as dogmatic as okay, him. But just the conviction of, just the conviction of religion, and it, it's not unique only to Christianity. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, you have this doctrine and this this set of rituals that you 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 abide by, and this way you're supposed to live. And if anyone questions, if you, if you're gonna have any type of open form for thought, then you are the enemy. You, what do you mean? You, you can't question. Okay. why something isn't as it is. He used the word last week, infallible, the infallible word of God. And I said, Dad, you know, when people tell stories to each other, the stories change every person they go to. Now, we have these oral traditions that have been handed down for thousands and thousands of years, and they started printing Bibles around 1429, I believe, with Gutenberg. And these people took their or impression of what they had. You're telling me no word changed? You're telling me Every translation went exactly the way God dictated that to humanity. Mm -hmm. So that didn't make sense to me. And then if, if at that time, during the Bible, these people were doing all these things and being inspired by God, why can't it be done right now? Mm -hmm. Why is this the only section of life for human beings where people were given the word straight from God to give to the masses on how they should live their lives. Okay, excellent. Uh, now, Herman, uh, you said you saw last week's show, and uh, um, Brian resonated with you in terms of your emotions and your feelings. So tell me what you thought when you saw last week's show and the dogmatic uh, you know, perspective of our Christian uh, guest. First of all, let me clarify that my thoughts are my own. Okay. And when I'm referring from a Buddhist perspective, I'll quote it out of a book or I'll say this is what Buddhism believes. Okay. All right. So we got to be able to have this conversation without getting all frustrated and taking it personal. Okay. You didn't write the Bible, dog. <laughs> it's not your responsibility to carry this torch. I'm telling you how I feel and we might be coming from different places, but at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we, we got to get along. We got to respect each other. We got to make this happen. We got to make it work. Okay, so you said that you were Buddhist. So share with us your your story. How did you come? Now I know you personally. So I know at one point you were going through Scientology, and now you're a Buddhist. So you said you are so relevant, the truth seeker. Have you found the truth? Oh yeah. Okay, so tell us. I'm still finding it too. Okay. Um, and that Scientology thing, they got me on an acting tip. <laughs> <laughs> they said, "Do you want a personality test?" <laughs> Standing outside of Central Casting. <laughs> And I said, yeah, next thing I know, I'm up in there like the X-Men class of superheroes taking tests every day. All right, yeah. Okay. So you were bamboozled into Scientology? Oh, hoodwink. <laughs> hoodwink. All right, So, you, but you said you weren't raised as a Christian. What were you raised? I was raised as a free thinker, okay. and this is, this is why I say that, because my mom is a lightweight flower child slash revolutionary, Okay. and she took up African studies. At an early age, I mean, we put on productions with the big Akhenaten uh, painting in the back. And you know what I'm saying? I know that. I know ancient Kemet and, and, and Punt. Punt Perfumery is the name of her line. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I knew the origins. Mm -hmm. I never really got into uh, the Christian side. My grandmother would take me to church. Okay. And I love the music. <laughs> okay, but I'd, I'll, I I would always like fall asleep during the the sermons. So you never got the message, but you like the music. Love the music. Okay, very good. Um, my dad is like like he's a like a Rastafarian American. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I listen to a lot of reggae, and so I got that. And I searched for years for a philosophy that I could wrap my arms around. 
You know, I studied um, mysticism. The first book I remember reading was Journey to Ixland by Carlos Castaneda. I'm like, damn, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don Juan is cold. Mm -hmm. But he was spitting facts about life, just truths. Mm. And I was like, you know, that's what I'm into. I'm into the mystical side. I don't, I'm not digging all this other stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so in continuing my journey, I went for a long time without a vehicle to push my spirituality. Mm -hmm. I mean, from my teens to my early 20s to my mid 20s. And then in my mid 20s, I realized, okay, I don't really believe this concept of God that everybody's talking about. I have felt the spirit before. I know that there's some out there. It's running all through me, but I just don't believe th this one, this thing. And I kept going on my journey, collecting absolute truths that I was holding in my heart. And uh, by the time I came across Buddhism, it aligned with what I believed already. Okay. The main uh, selling point for me was that there was a practice. Nam mm yoho -hmm. renge kyo, day and night. Ah, this is how I can pray. What does that mean? Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, Nam Devotion, Myoho, Mystic Law, Renge, Cause and Effect, Kyo is Sound. So it's the mystic, it's devotion to the mystic law of cause and effect through sound. Okay. And when I was searching, when I identified that I didn't believe the story, one thing that did resonate with me was I, I questioned myself. I said, what is this thing that makes sure that what goes around comes around? How is that an absolute? You know, it don't matter if somebody saw me or not. The retribution will come or whatever. So how long have you been practicing Buddhism? Three years. So um, it is your it's way of life. Faith. Okay. And are there a lot of black people in the Buddhist church? There's a lot of black people. There's some black people. There's some black people. It's, it's, it's a good amount of black people <laughs> up in the, in the Buddhist society, <laughs> man. <laughs> do, let me Represent. get you up in here. So uh, you have two different perspectives, yeah. um, which is just a number of different um, um, e examples of why black men are not either attending church or going right. to church or even changing their faith. Right. So why do you believe, from your experience, um, why more black men aren't in church? First of all, I, I want to say thank you again for allowing me to be here. I'm not here, first of all. <laughs> let me let me let me let your listening audience know I'm not here to convert anyone. Okay. I'm here to just share my perspective. Very good. And um I'm honored to be here with your host, I mean with your guest today. Um Starlet, if I had the answer to that question, every church um in our city and across this world would be filled with um black men, white men, every type of man in, in the world. Um, but um, they, they they often say that now today we are living in a post Christian generation, mm. meaning that there are a lot of individuals um, that simply have not been raised in the custom of Christianity or the custom of grandma, okay. um, et cetera, within our in our world. Uh, when I look at the paradigm shift of our culture and our generation, um, it's important that we recognize that there are many reasons, including these brothers here, um, but there are many reasons why um, black men are not in the church. Mm -hmm. One being, um, we have a whole lot of young men that's in prison. Mm. Um, as a young man, I used to ask myself, um, 14, 15 years old, where are all the good positive brothers um, that I know that there are in the world? There's a lot of people in prison. There's a lot of people that's um, just not willing to um, follow uh, in the cultures of don't Christianity. They have, don't they have prison ministries, though? Yeah, they have prison ministries. But, okay. I mean, when they get out of prison, I mean, it's, it's a whole nother shift. Okay. And the reality is, you know, there are many reasons why um, black men are not in church. And uh, some of the perspectives um, that's been shared today and on last week, mm -hmm. um, those are all going towards the, that main reason. But, um, you know, ultimately, I think um, the church, again, has to um, continue to be the church that it was called to be. Um, there are individuals, you know, it's, it's you know, it's not every, it's not a one size fit all type of mentality in right. this world. So uh, folks are going to choose and um, choose their beliefs. And it's up to us as the church to continue uh, to be that light that Jesus has told us to be to this world. Well, in the second half of the show, we're going to talk specifically about some of those reasons um, yeah. why black men 
uh, don't attend church. Um, but specifically for you, uh, as a pastor, you've been pastoring for 17 years. Was there ever a period in your life where you questioned your faith and, and tried to uh, seek something outside of Christianity? Well, you know, I've been pastoring five years, um, preaching for 17 years, okay. and there's never been a time I can say that I've questioned uh, my faith and my belief. Uh, my faith and my belief, again, I was not that type of kid that was raised in the church. I, um, I believe I went to church when I was a kid for donuts. Um, as you can see. <laughs> um, I went to church uh, for donuts, and um, I be going to church for donuts, and by me um, going to private school, I always had a sense of relationship with about who Jesus was. And um, through um, my growing and through my um, uh, situations in life, um, I had to literally at a young age uh, ask God a question. And my family was going through some situations. And I said, Lord, um, I remember hearing the preacher talking about uh, when I was not asleep. Um, talking about um, going into your secret prayer closet and I need you to come and intervene in my situation now. And so um, from that day forward, um, I, and one of the promises I made to God, I said, Lord, if you just step in into my situation, I promise you, I will serve you till I die. And so here it is from the ages of 13 to now. I've been um, praising God and serving God ever since. Okay. And so um, ultimately, you know, I have never had a never questioned my faith. Um, I, I stand by my faith. Um, I walk with my faith. I uh, see with my faith, you know, et cetera. OK. All right. So historically, and we can look back in the 60s, the church was so much more integral in the black community. It mobilizes. We're more politically engaged, yeah. uh, especially at the leadership of, of Reverend King. And we're yes. going to talk about that in the second half. But Jakeem, I'm going to start with you. What do you think happened with the black church um, from the 1960s when we were all you know, mobilized more for not only just our own uh, personal rights, but our, our civic rights? So what do you think happened to the black church? Well, the same thing that happened to m many of our s institutions is integration. Um, the quality of education that we used to receive, uh, I mean, the church played an integral part in our community before then. Okay. And once there was integration, uh, we started venturing out in different directions. We didn't all go to school together. We didn't, uh, because we had access to certain things, we didn't need, rely on the church so much as because the church was integral, in, integral with our politics. Mm -hmm. That was our form. That was our only place we had a voice and we could organize without hopefully meeting violent responses from the out the outside world. Okay. So, you know, I, I think that it's just integration played a large role in, in, in us going in different directions, and, and, and you try different things when you go to different places. Okay. And, and so, Pastor, what do you think about yeah. the mobilization of the black church since the 1960s? Well, again, I mean, it's, it's you know, um, it's not like it used to be. Um, but nothing is like it used to be. But I believe that there are churches out there like the Weller Street Baptist Church and a few other uh, my pastor friends that's out there that's really, you know, taking it and really, you know, socially conscious of what's going on in their communities and neighborhoods. And so the reality is, you know, as um, your guests have said, you know, times have changed. Um, there are so many pastors that are dealing with, you know, everybody can't do what I do. And I don't expect every pastor to do what I do, being out there on the street, being out there in the community, helping the community. Why don't you expect that? Isn't uh, that what pastors well, are supposed no, to do? Well, a pastor responsibility is simply to look out to God's flock and to build God's flock. Um, that's, so that's, you know, we can we can take on the essence of social conscious issues or whatever it might be. But that's our, our responsibility is to look after God's church and God's people and to build God's people. Um, it's not out there to be out there to protest and everything. Everybody is called to be something different, you know, just like, you know, we have different um formed the faith here today. So, so yeah. were you saying that King wasn't supposed to be out there protesting? No, King was, but there was a whole lot of black pastors that did not support King Vision. And okay. There was a whole lot of black pastors that was not out there. Okay. We we see the glory of King, but we don't see the struggles that King had to go through. And so um, the reality is that there are pastors out there, such as myself, that's on the front line of so certain issues, but there are pastors that that's just not their calling. All right, very good. Herman, uh, one of the things that people often talk about when it comes to the Christian church is the hypocrisy 
and and the judgment. So talk a little bit about the hypocrisy. Um, I know that you 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 attended the church. You know you like the music. The music was slamming, but I'm sure you've been around. Uh, the Christian church long enough to know about the complaints about the hypocrisy in the yeah, church. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what? It's uh, it's the voice of the community. I've heard this in many different circles. But again, I'm speaking, I'm speaking from my perspective. Um, I haven't like I get mad at the church for the lack of sustenance. I feel should be given. Okay. I feel like it's given out on a piece by piece basis when you should just give me all the game. Don't leave me on edge to come back next week and, you know, take a little of my money while you're doing it. Now, I'm not saying all. Now, how is that different it. from the Buddhist church? Right. Well, I'll tell you. Um, my, my issue is with the game. Let me just say that part. The game? The, with, the, with the information that's given. I okay. feel like it's. Pieced out, okay. piecemealed out. And uh, I've been to certain churches, and I'm not just talking about Christianity. I'm not picking on Christianity, but I've been to Baptist church or whatever, and it it he wasn't really saying anything, and it pissed me off. Okay. Okay, now, um, Buddhism is a little bit different, you dig? And I'm not saying that it's better, but for my taste, um, I... Everything is out there. You you could just. What are you raising there? What is no, that? This is uh, my dear friends in America by Daisaku Ikeda. He's the third president of the SGI. What is the SGI? Soka Gakkai International. That is value cre- creating society. Okay, so that's a denomination within the Buddhist religion. It is the most. Um, it is the it. It's the it's the purest form of the Buddhist. Religion. Okay. Now, uh, when we were talking about this before the show, you were familiar with the term the SJI and the Buddhist. So at some point, you were exposed also to uh, Buddhism. Why wasn't that something that gravitated, why you, you gravitated towards in terms of a spiritual practice? Uh, it's not that I haven't gravitated toward it. Actually, I've studied a lot of, when I came back from Howard, um, I started studying African culture and I started studying religions. And uh, I there's there's good the, each philosophy or, 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 or religion has value. Okay. Buddhism has a lot of value, and I, I do feel connected to the Buddhist church, but I, I, I feel that I, I wouldn't call myself a Buddhist because I'm not practicing Buddhism. So how does Buddhism help the black, I mean, not help the black man, but how is that more appealing to the black man and his agenda versus the black church? Well, you don't have the deity, the, 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 the white Caucasian Jesus Christ deity okay. for him to contend with. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, um, and then it's also accepting of accepting of all. Everybody can come and participate. I mean, it's no segregation. I'm, I would let him speak upon Buddhism okay. more than me, but okay. my, all of my experience has been positive with it. Okay. Is now, what about the hypocrisy of the church itself? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, if we're keep I mean, it real, okay. it's real talk, real people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, you know, <laughs> if you ask someone to believe something uh, today and it, it, you would look at them like they're crazy, like, dude, you t- are you smoking? You know, what, what is this? You're saying that this happened, this guy went out and he got, you know, two of every animal on the earth and jumped, threw him in a boat and he floated out. And, for, for, you know, I'm like, there's there's just more to it than that. I mean, okay. uh, that's not really addressing hypocrisy, but okay. it gives me. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where it said Jesus was white. Um, um, no, but I'm reali- just, no, you know, reality, okay. I'm just, I just threw that out, out there. But is I Jesus mean, black? Yeah, he's black. He's got brown skin. Do you so, teach I mean, to your that, congregation that Jesus was I black? Mean, from what I read, he's black. He's okay. a black man. Okay. So the the reality is, you know, um, the reality is, you know, there are we are still on hypocrisy. Oh, you can just yeah. So the reality is, I I just think that we have to recognize that. Um, Everybody is going to put on what they believe, and it's important that we, um, as a Christian, I believe that um, I believe the whole word of God is true. There's nothing infallible about the word of God. 
Um, there's a whole lot. And that's where your faith kicks in. And you recognize that um, God had the power to do a whole lot of different things. And, um, you know, I, I choose not to chant. I choose not to just say I'm just here. How uh, is chanting different from speaking in tongues? Well, um, I don't you know, I don't speak in tongues. So, I mean, so the reality is, you know, um, I believe, you know, everybody has a different way of um Share, sharing that spiritual outpour. Okay, so before we go to commercial break, it's you different to say? from speaking in tongues because you it sounded are, a life same. It sounded that's sa- what I'm saying a little bit, yeah. but you know what? You're conscious. You're consciously put uh, putting thoughts out there as you're chanting. Okay, you all did. right, very good. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the rituals and the practices uh, in the Christian church. And, and Pastor Tools, you you've gone to great lengths to change some of the rituals in the church to appeal to a new congregation so we're talking about why black men why more black men aren't in church today here on the dialogue we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back we're going to address some of those specific issues that we've been told why black men aren't attending church right here on the dialogue i'm your host starter quarles and we'll be right back Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned. Season's greetings. This is Richard Carr, station manager at L.A. Talk Live, and I just wanted to take a moment out. To thank all of our listeners out there who helped to make LA Talk Live the internet's newest and hottest destination for beautiful music and invigorating talk. And I wanted to send out my heartfelt holiday wishes to all of our listeners worldwide and wish you all the very best of holiday seasons. Here's to peace, prosperity, and good health in the new year. Thanks for listening to LA Talk Live and thanks for your support. Happy holidays to everyone. Oh, your skin looks great. Thank you. What's your secret? Frankincense and myrrh oil by Ancient Essence. Frankincense and myrrh oil by Ancient Essence? Yes, it's a beauty secret used since the time of the Greeks but and the Romans. This spa in Malibu told me about frankincense and myrrh by Ancient Essence, and now my skin is lovely. Yes, your skin looks great. Call Ancient Essence at 1-800-627-9813. Discover the secret of beautiful skin. Call 1-800-627-9813. Discover the secret. Frankincense and myrrh oil by Ancient Essence. Discover the secret of beautiful skin. Available at fine spas and beauty centers. Interested in advertising your business, product, or service here on The Dialogue? Call 323-547-7748. The Dialogue will help you promote your business, increase your traffic, and bring in new clients through innovative and creative marketing packages, including affordable radio ad campaigns for small businesses. Find out more. Call 323-547-7748. That's 323-547-7748. Or go to www.thedialoguela.com. And now, back to The Dialogue. The Dialogue. With Starlet Quarles. Real talk. Real people. Welcome back to The Dialogue. Real talk, real people. I am your host, Starlet Quarles. And we're on live at latalklive.com. Also streaming live at 1690 AM, The One, out of Omaha, Nebraska. Today, we're discussing why aren't more black men in church with our guest, L.A. entrepreneur, Jakeem Stewart, talk host, talk show host, Herman Jones, a.k.a. Sir Relevant, the Truth Seeker, and senior pastor K.W. Tulis of the Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church, all here to discuss why more black men are in church. And Pastor, before we went to commercial break, we talked about the practices 
and the rituals and how that has yeah. been somewhat of a turnoff uh, for members of the Christian faith. So talk about how you've changed the culture in your church. Well, one of the things when I got to my church five years ago, as you um, share with the listener, my church is um, not in a predominantly African-American community, Boyle Heights, um, downtown area of Los Angeles. So when I got there, it was a church that was literally um, on life support, um, which is a lot of churches are out there on life support um, due to the changing of the community or whatever it might be. And here it is, a person growing up in a predominantly African-American community in South Los Angeles, um, assistant pastor of a predominantly African-American church. I recognized when I got to this church that I could not do things the same old, same old way. But what's considered was same used. old, same old? I mean, just just whatever it might have been, the order of service. Um, you know, a lot of men don't like long services and whatever it might be. I didn't like long services, mm -hmm. you know, so it was just like a whole lot of different things that was um, put into place um, dealing with the program structure that I just knew I had to change. One another thing being is that, you know, the timing of the church, my church uh, is in Boyle Heights downtown. So therefore, um, the timing was at 11 o'clock when I first got there. I had to make some changes with the time. I moved it from 11 to nine. Um, so I had to really figure out, you know, I had, being led by God, I had to figure out some ways to breathe life back into the church. So, um, so is the majority of your church mostly a black in terms of your black congregation, mostly I, black women or black Men yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, it's um, you know, it's 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 majority uh, women. Okay. Um, but I mean, of course, it's uh, you know, I have some good strong brothers at Weller Street, and um, it's not a. a it's not a, I don't want to label it as an African American church because I do have um, Latinos and I. But it's predominantly African. -American. It's predominantly African American. Okay, I do. very good. Yeah, so I had to do a little changes in that aspect, and with those changes, uh, we had this one struggling ministry has blossomed into an exciting ministry. If you don't believe me, check us out live every Sunday. www.wellerstreetlive.com. All right, very good. Thank you. So I'm going to throw out some uh, comments and, and questions that were told to me, yeah. and we did this. Show Show, this whole series uh, a couple years ago on on a dialogue. So, and we've invited those gentlemen back next week um, who helped us launch our series on uh, the black church and religion versus spirituality. But specifically in terms of some things that they said and things that I've heard um, as to reasons why um, the black church doesn't do anything to enhance the black male agenda. Anybody jump in. What is the black male agenda? What is it to be a black man? Do you know what I mean? How is the church enhancing you to be a better black man? Well, um, at Weller Street, let me say from my personal, I, I try to live by example. Um, I'm a I'm a not only am I a young man, but I'm a um, father of two wonderful children. Um, I'm the um, dad that uh, drop my children off at school every day, pick them up every day. Uh, president of PTA, do a whole lot of different things. Um, not only that, I try I try to live a life um, according to the word, um, and I try to be that example. So um, I just think that. You know, like like our brother said, what is the black agenda? What fits me might not fit them, but the reality is, I just try to live a good life and I try to live. I mean, an at, a, at a bare minimum, black men are supposed to be leaders of their household, leaders, leaders of, of the, the community. Exactly. So, yeah. how well, is the I, black church helping them do their job? I, I think. think, I think I, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think the role of any spiritual organization should be to number one, hold the member. First of all, give them. If you chose this lane, you chose it for a reason. Okay. It fits your agenda. It should be able to give you, you know, origin story enough to where you have an idea of why you're here and what you're doing, okay. what you need to be doing while you're here. And then it needs to hold you accountable to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, that's it. The people that are in it, they need to be on that same mission. It, that's, so everybody. You're talking about the, the, the congregation as well as the leadership? Congregation, the leadership, anybody that's affiliated with that organization needs to be doing that same thing, self-betterment. Okay. And if they see a brother of theirs not doing something like that, they need to be holding them accountable. Because at the end of the day, men hold men accountable. Do and they really, though? They do. I mean, they do. It, it's, it's, I, I, I mean, I think something that I, I identify with the Christian religion is, is the, sep the difference between male and female. I look at it. I mean, you know, you asked me the black male agenda. The the the, the religious uh, organization should speak to human beings. Mm -hmm. Period. And uh, I remember uh, when Nelson Mandela came to D.C. after he got out, he talked about you know, and what I believe is that God is not in some of us. You know, God is in all of us. Mm -hmm. And whatever vehicle you use for your spiritual connection to God, 
which I don't like, you know, also the Christian, we think of God as some man in the sky. No, this is an energy, a positive energy. Everything should be used to help better you, and you put this positive energy vibration out into the universe, and you will receive this positive energy vibration back to you. It okay. feeds upon itself. So, Pastor Tills, do you specifically have any agenda to reach out to more black men? How are you encouraging well, cur- encouraging more black men to attend your church? Yeah, you know, simply by being who I am, by reaching out, evangelism. Um, one of the things, you know, my church is downtown Boyle Heights, so one of the things that's startling is me driving through um, Skid Row every Sunday morning and almost every morning and seeing so many African African American man that's dealing with mental issues or whatever it might be on the streets. So we we need to develop more programs again to reach out to um, African American men and all men. Uh, and simply, I do what I do by simply being that example of who I am, and that's a Christ-like, Christ-loving guy. So, is your church uh, older or younger? Do you have a young congregation? Do you have an older? I, I congregation? have a real mixture. Okay. You know, I have I have those that's been there for 69 years, and I have those that have been there under me for five years. You know, I've had have those that's new to the church um, that you know have not experienced the church thing before. I have you know, so I have a I have a I have a mixture of a congregation. Okay. I have a real good congregation. All right, so here's come visit. Here's what other black men say: the feminization of the church is too many women in church that you can't mac to. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in addition to you know the homosexuality, which we'll talk about, but talk about the plethora of black women in church and uh, and the feminization of the church, Jaheen. Um, I mean that these feel these thoughts were not. I don't have any identification. I don't identify with them. Okay, um, that's fair. You know, there, there, yeah, there are a lot of women in church. There's a lot of single women in church. There's a lot of men chasing tail in church. You know, um, you can go find women in church. Um, I, I think they have an easier time of, ex, you know, uh, coming forward and, and 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 accepting, just being more submissive. I don't know if that's the appropriate term. I don't want to offend anybody, but men. Do the women be more submissive? Come and submit to because you're submitting to your ideology or your okay. your religion there. And and uh, men, we have this big, you know, we have our egos, and mm-hmm. a lot of us have a harder time getting down on our knees and 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 submitting to whatever the doctrine is that is in front of us. Okay. Uh, that's that's really all, all right, I got Pastor. See, so shaking your no, head. No, no, I agree. A lot of people do have a problem with um, submitting, um, and that's one of the problems. Um, why people are not coming to the church, black men and women. But the reality is, you know, um, I don't think there's never a such thing as too much or too many. Mm. Uh, and the black and and women um, are ma- the majority in a lot of churches. And yeah, a lot, they're, they're, a lot they're, they're, of that comes from a, from the falling away of brethren and not and not having the um, and not you know being able to reach the other brothers but there is i, I think there is a problem having just only a, a congregation full of women and you're not reaching to black men at all do you think it's specific only uh, to black people the women in church or i'm i'm just curiously i'm just asking i'm sorry what was your question are there more women in white churches are there more women in in other races that i that I'm, i don't know i can only yeah, talk I, about my I mean, black you know, christian yeah. experience that is universal. so yeah i bet you it is a universal thing it i mean there's universal. a book there there's a book out there um i can't think of the author i wish i would have brought it a uh, white men are not in church not it's, just, it's, you it's know, a white author so, ac- actually so, exactly mm-hmm. a white author mm-hmm. and so um the reality is there are you know this is a universal problem okay very good i Here. think that um you know, because in, in in SGI, it's more women than it is men, too. And I always ask myself, why is that? Right. But um, you, you know what, man? I think it's women are just more open, open and to receive. Mm-hmm. And they don't have mm-hmm. that ego thing with the man standing up there preaching to him. You know, a man's going to feel a certain way about that. <laughs> like, I could do what he's doing. And, you know, right. and, and, and so that's not there. But the women are the nurturers. Mm-hmm. They And they, they started this. They started this, you know, this faith. and re- They started this, man. Okay. The men took that from the women. Okay, well, let me let me pick it back on that and, and, and talk about the leadership in the church. Um, a lot of men, a lot of alpha black men don't want to follow some of these leaders. Do you know what I mean? That they're not right. alpha men and... You know what I mean? They they look at some of the pastors who maybe have effeminate mannerisms or not as 
uh, masculine or aggressive as most men tend mm-hmm. to want to be attracted to. So so they're they're not interested in following leadership as someone who they can't relate to from an alpha male perspective. So why don't you talk mm-hmm. about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things. Are you alpha male? Um, uh, you know, I'm trying to embrace that word alpha male. <laughs> you know, no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a strong brother. So um, uh, as those in radio land know. Um, but the reality is, you know, part of the uh, concept of Christianity of our faith is humbling yourself. Mm. And um, I think we have to learn to be humble to to everybody from from the pastor to the children to whoever it might be. You have to be able to adapt to different environments and circumstances, et cetera. Um, and when we humble ourselves, then we will be more open to receiving and um, receiving as what God wants for us to have. You know, but again, you know, Jakeem talked about the black male ego. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all male ego. Let's <laughs> not always pick up the problem as black. Well, wait, no, but we're just talking specifically <laughs> about brothers. And right, we're talking okay. about our black experience. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They got their own issues. Let's deal with ours. So, uh, but in terms of just, you know, the ego, and, and in addition to, you know what I mean, their significant others or their wives putting these other black men you on still, pedestals. You still have the religion. You still have this supposed patriarchal religion that was handed down where. The black man has to submit to this image, and images are just as important because they become reality of this white god okay. or white pa- white savior. Well, Pastor? I, got, I got a picture so, of black Jesus in my office. But, I get you, no, but, but you know, no, but let me everyone say, let me, can let identify say, with let me, that. Let me, let me, let me, if, let me, it's go got on. a historical root. I mean, I, I yeah, mentioned I, it real, real shortly last week. If you see the film Sankofa and you look at what the slave had to go through when his mother, who was an Akan, still had her African connection because she was born in Africa, brought here, and he's the slave, the son of the head of the master, and he's been taught this Christianity, and watching him going through this medical, me- mental metamorphosis, it's, 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 oh my God, it, it weighed on his brain, so. And, t- and it, talk about that, Pastor, because Shakyam uh, tried to talk about that last week, and, and you're more um, proficient in terms of African literature and, and the historical element from a religious p- perspective, but uh, uh, slavery. How can how? I mean, the church doesn't want to even talk about slavery some of the time. It's like the pink elephant in the room, but we can't deny its impact on black people. We can't deny that that's where we got Christianity from. Well, what were we doing before? Uh, you know, they, the Middle Passage. Who are we praying? What, yeah. what were our practices? And so we can't deny where we that, got that, this that, doctrine that's, that's from. A, that's a whole another, another show. Uh, show <laughs> okay, <and we> can, <laughs> but I'm just carry, saying we, can, we cannot deny we, we, how we got this doctrine. Well, we. <sighs> Go ahead. I'm you, sorry. <laughs> no, well, you know, just, we didn't get a chance reality, to talk about no, his African history you know, and slavery I'm, last week, I'm, but it and, is a reality. And, 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 uh, that you know, we can we can we can discuss that at a later time. Okay, yeah. okay. But I'm not I'm not prepared. I'm prepared, but I'm not prepared. Very good. That's fair. That. You got Herman. That. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Go ahead. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's Help up? Shaquem out last week. You identified with him. Talk about the uh, the African I perspective mean, in you, terms of Christianity you, and its relevance. You can't. You cannot escape that that's 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 real that's straight up and down and it was the um you know they use it as a fear tactic to keep us in line from a you know a spiritual perspective okay and and what i've noticed i'm going back to this question you said you know as the generations have proceeded it's gotten the effect the stronghold on it has gotten less and less you know your grandfather your great grandfather was really into it mm. and the grandfather was into it mm. and your daddy was kind of into it <laughs> now you ain't into it but th- there's a there's a it, that's also a mixture of technology coming along and people seeing other things that might suit them because i think christianity was given to us as black folks that's like the 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 basic denomination you're like kind of okay you got like born into like you're being born into being a democrat yeah yeah, exactly (laughs) let me let me let me add this okay go ahead uh, to the to the listeners that you know if you study your bible you'll study the bible you'll see that it's a lot of black history Mm -hmm. in our bible Brian you mentioned know, that there are blacks so, in the Bible. Yeah, it's a whole lot of black folks okay, in the Bible. Okay, very good. And so the reality is, you know, we when, when you study that concept, uh, you will then embrace that. Now, if we talk about the Bible is given to us as the people over here, but before Columbus, we was here. Mm-hmm. You know, so the reality is this is something that we as a people, uh, we've, we've embraced and it's part of our culture of who we are. Okay, very let me, good. Let me piggyback that real quick. Um, if you want to know what the brother's referring to, um, 
a couple of things you could look at the idea of the Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. They had that with Isis mm -hmm. in Egypt of mm -hmm. uh, the resurrection. Mm -hmm. That idea was found with the Saru. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look into something called the 42 Laws of Ma'at. You'll see the origin of where the Ten Commandments come from. So you're making mm -hmm. correlations with African yeah. stories and Absolutely. history with the Christian Bible. Absolutely. Okay, I, very I've good. Heard Absolutely. That. All yeah. right. Uh, Jakeem, I hear you over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the my, my odd, all that. All, the, all, <laughs> the, all of the stories and concepts were things that were handed down okay. and changed through the white man's taking the religion and repackaging it up and saying here and... God said you should be good slaves, and 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 uh, uh, Noah's uh, son came in, his dark-skinned son came in and saw him naked, and he cursed him, and you, your people will be cursed. I mean, I think the Mormons just led us into heaven about, what, five years ago, six oh, years ago? Oh, they did that? I think they, yeah, I think <laughs> they good, made man. some kind okay. of <laughs> adjustment, so we, we now qualify for uh, membership in heaven. Okay, Thanks, well, Mitt Romney. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about uh, uh, another taboo topic in the black church, the homosexuals. Now, uh, this became a recent conversation because of, uh, not recent, but as far as a political conversation because of Obama's same-sex endorsement but we all know there have been homosexuals in the church for years not only in the congregation but they're leading the choir and even some of them are in the pulpit you know what i mean i often ask why does eddie long still have a church and why as christians are we holding him accountable for his sin why are we still following someone who is either molesting boys or having you know homosexual activity so talk about homosexuality in the church are all homosexuals going to hell our pastor last week said yes, because it's in the well, Bible that it's yeah, a sin. I, I just I, I believe that um, I you can't ex I can't condone anything that's not um, in God's nature. And so as uh, free thinking and as free spirit as I am, I just can't embrace certain things. So do you it's, a diff it's against my do you culture. turn away uh, homosexuals no, in your church? Not. You cast their tithing not. check? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the, re the reality is this. This is the reality. <laughs> but but, the but they believe in God, you know. Uh, they listen, I'm not. They I'm love not, the Lord and put Him on a pedestal me, and all don't that. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay. not. I'm not passing judgment. Okay, I just can't good. accept their lifestyle. Just like I can't accept the drunk lifestyle or whatever it might be. So if they ever uh, legalize gay marriage, I you would never me, do a wedding. You, you would never do a wedding. No. Okay. All right. No. Very good. The thing about it, you know, the thing about it is, we are all images of the universe. Mm -hmm. We are some type of incarnation of the universe so where do you, where does i don't know it's, when you say you, universe are you equating that with god or are you atheist yeah no no i'm not atheist so you believe there is a god i believe in the concept of god as so that it's the it's the it's the entity that makes sure what goes around comes around what, what do you believe about jesus I don't believe. Well, I don't believe that story. You don't believe the story. Do you believe he even existed? Do you believe he's a son of God? Not necessarily. If you go back in history, there are many different uh, archetypes that follow the Jesus archetype. You go back to Heru, Heru. and mm -hmm. and 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 all Mithra and all kind of stuff that came before that particular archetype. So I don't even get into that. So how does the how does the Christian Church but, deal with you know black males intelligence? Because a lot of us have yeah, benefited I mean, from the civil rights movement. We've been educated. We've been exposed to different religions. So now we're even questioning. You know, what I mean, our homegrown faith. So, you, I mean, how do, how does the Christian you, church tackle you, you, that? You deal with it, um, and that's one of the powers of the internet. You can pull up anything, and you can see the origins of any type of whatever you want to see. I mean, so the reality is, you just stick to the Word of God, and you stick, and you help them to embrace the Word of God. And the reality is, um, there are individuals out there that likes to go dig deep and talk about, um, you know, certain things that's. Um, that that a person have put out there but the reality is um the word of god to us as christians is is our blueprint for better living okay all right very good so uh in the last uh, few minutes i want to talk about the, the the church and the mobilization of the black community especially when it comes to political and social change uh, mm -hmm. we talked about reverend king earlier and he was a significant um uh role model in terms of mobilizing the black community for social change what are these pastors doing today in terms of trying to get more Black, not only black men, but black people involved in political and social change in our communities. I went to uh, a service at West Angeles uh, maybe three weeks ago. What? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, the, uh, I think it was uh, Pastor Blake's uh, son who was speaking at the point. And um, he 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 discussed politics. He discussed that everybody in the church had a responsibility to vote. Um it was an unofficial responsibility, but he 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 used his form for political uh, education, and I, I think that's all positive. I mean, I think whatever church or 
religion people d- decide to attend, uh, it should. I mean, all of it goes hand in hand with some, our experience but, here. But some black men say that the Christian leaders are on the wrong side of so, uh, of the issue. They're too uh, strict. Uh, when it, they're too socially conservative, and that turns people off. They're against abortion, stem cells. So you know, talk about the pastor well, and them not being well, uh, might, socially being too socially conservative. This might be something um, you know controversial to folks listening, but I'm a I'm a um, pro-choice, pro-life. Okay. You know, I, I I believe in life. I believe in a woman's right to choose too. Okay. I believe God gave us that ability to choose every single day of our life. And so the reality is, you know, I do believe I don't believe that we have a whole lot of um, what they call those the hellfire and brimstone uh, conservative pastors out there. There are pastors out there conservative. But um, the reality is, you know, I believe um, that we must be involved in civic activities such as voting. And the Bible clearly let us know that when the wicked is all is in the office, the people perish. But when the righteous is off, the people will rejoice. So but Martin have, did more than just encourage black people to vote. I mean, he actually got on the street. He yeah. went to jail. I mean, he got beaten for the cause i mean hey, i don't see no pastors like, out there I, you don't you don't look giving at, up their cars you walking just, you don't you don't Al see sharp than a pastor <laughs> al sharp al sharp <laughs> you are what being you called know. to action what, 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 al sharp to the extent that there is no black agenda in my well, opinion what are the black pastors what's the what's well, black you know spiritual community doing to try to create a black agenda a political we, black agenda that that benefits us socially and economically. We are involved. We are engaged. We might not get as much push or as much plug as a whole lot of people got back then. But I'm as a pastor, I'm engaged. And your listeners, those that's listening, know I'm engaged. Okay. And so the reality. But you know, there are a lot of your constituents that the, aren't. I mean, not no, that constituents, no, but. But everybody, like colleagues. I said earlier, colleagues. a lot of Thank my you. colleagues are not. But everybody can't do what I do. Okay. Blake is involved. I mean, he's doing. He's got a program called Save Africa's Children. Right. He mm-hmm. raises money. I mean, he helps the community. He has a, a CDC. He builds housing. Right. But he's Almer uh, from Faithful Central. He's he plays an active role. I mean, and these are all pastors that are the light is on to make a pastors. Right. But, pastor. yeah. well, what about the little pastors? The I mean, little, there, 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 are, even there are a lot about, of little pastors. But there are even complaints about the mega pastors that they only cater to celebrities and they look for the ties and they have nice big houses and cars, but hey. the communities around them are still blighted. Hey. And still, there's still poverty around them, and that they're not doing anything to benefit the large churches in these black communities. There will the always be poverty, poverty, so a church can't solve that. But right. they have to play an active role in setting up programs to help feed, educate, I do and, and 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 assist the community. Okay. Um, and 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 we need to we need to link up, man. I mean, you know, religion should not be a barrier exactly. for people. In, in righteousness and truth, we need to link yeah. up. Find the people that what, are active what does that and roll like? with it. What does that look like? How does it, how can you link up with, with people who have different faith and different denominations? And I have no some, problem going to the Buddhist. I know, church. I, but, but or, I'm saying, but and I have no Christians. problem going to this man's yeah, church and, and, and hearing his word because <laughs> you know he's trying. It's, it, his efforts are positive. He's putting positive energy out into the world. If that's what I'm doing, then at that point it's like, well, what? Let's make this happen. Yes, what so are we the, trying so, to achieve, and let's do so it. So the onus yeah. is on the black man to find a leader that he can follow. The onus is on the black man to, to be a leader himself. himself. Yeah, there you yeah, go. yeah. All we right, don't need a good. leader. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> but you yeah. have to have a moral compass. You have to have a spiritual teacher. I mean, you don't know everything. Well, you have to have a mentor. You have to have somebody who can help you. and disciple. But you have to. That's the lead yourself and lead your family as well. well and the, and that sound good, but in the Christian faith, we recognize that you need the word, you need a pastor. How can you hear without the preacher? How can he preach unless he's been sent? And so ultimately, God give you a pastor to help you, help build you. But what if to God where g- you can live, for you can live a better life yourself. But what if you? Well, what yeah. if God gives you Eddie Long? And then you hear about all this, you know, these sins and then the, his sexual preclude. What well, I mean, what if I, the pastor? I, I, how are you? Are you supposed I, to continue to follow Eddie Long I, when you I, know that he's sinning and? I, I say that Ed- pastors are human. Pastors, I'm not condoning what uh, Eddie did or whatever he's allegedly done, um, but pastors are human. Pastors make mistakes, but we are still vessels used by God. Okay. One of those childhood questions I had was I was told that if you didn't go to church and you didn't stay with the group of Christ, you you wouldn't you weren't going to make it. Make it where? To heaven. Okay. Is okay. that true? You you had to be a, you had to associate with the body of Christ. You had to stay in and stay connected. You couldn't Bi- just study Bi- on your own. Bi- Bible says, "If you believe in your heart, Lord Jesus, God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved." 
So All right. Well, we are at the bottom of our hour. This hour always goes by so fast when we talk about We need an hour and a half, <laughs> hour 45 or We so. are definitely going to continue this conversation next week with our part two of religion versus spirituality. Uh, Pastor Tuis, we definitely have to have you back on uh, in the future. Thank you so much. And how can people attend your church and find you? You can find me on the internet, uh, Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church, Weller Street Live, every Sunday.com, 129 South Glass Street. You stream Great live? church. We stream live every Sunday. Great church. Come down to visit anybody. Everybody's welcome. Okay. Don't care who you from. Who All you right. Are. right um, you know what? Uh, Herman H. Herman Jones the second on Facebook. Uh, I think it's Savage Breed at Savage Breed on Twitter. I think. So when is your show coming out? My show is coming out. We shooting for February. Okay. Okay. Everything will be edited up. Keeping the relevant show. Look out for it. We doing the same thing. Stars doing, but visual and a little bit. It's kind of variety. All right. And I take my hat off to you, sister. I love you. Keeping Thank you so much. Jakeem, how can people find you? Uh, they can always reach me at area code 323-428-5060 or at Jakeem Stewart at Gmail, which is J-A-K-I-M is in money. Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, at gmail.com. If you are looking for a luxury car, this is the man that you... Any okay. type of car you need. <laughs> I can right. find it or make it go away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, Thank for you. joining us for our conversation, Why More Black Men Aren't Church. Uh, we hope we've asked, answered some of that question. Um, but we'll join us again next week for our part two of Religion versus Spirituality. I'm your host, Charlotte Quarles, signing off as my mama's child and my daddy's baby girl. Until next week.